Hello everyone, welcome to the assignment 3 for Web Applications Engineering at UNSW Sydney. The aim of this video is to showcase our project and teach you some of the ways we implemented different aspects of our project using JSPs, JDBCs and SQL. I hope you have fun! Before we start, I'm going to show you a little layout of what our project is going to look like. So we have our start page and from our start page we can do three different things. We can either log in, you can register as a user, or you can search for books. When you click the login button, you're taken immediately to the welcome page where you welcome back. When you register, you take it to the registration page where you fill out some details and then are sent an activation email um, where you can activate your account and become an existing user. We've also got two different simple search and advanced search functions. Um, the simple search is present on the toolbar, so you can search at any time, whereas the advanced search page is a detailed page which you can search for things like the publication year, the price, etc. Once you've completed your search, it'll take you to a results page which has a list of all the publications that match your search fields. Um, then you can either add it to your wish list or add it to your cart. If you choose to add to your wish list, you'll be taken to your wish list page, which basically has the list of books that you have added to your wish list. And if you've added it to your cart, it'll take you to your shopping cart page. And on this page, you'll have the option to actually buy these books. And uh, when you buy these books, you'll receive an email confirming your purchase. So, welcome to our homepage. Um, this is our homepage. And as you can see, in our toolbar at the very top, we've got the homepage. We've got an advanced search function, a graph search function. We've also got a simple toolbar where you can search just for the name or the type of book. And we can also um, have the login up in the toolbar as well. We can type in your username and password if you're an existing user. Or to the very right, you can have the register button as well. So we have a lot of functionalities in our toolbar to make our project very, very user friendly. On our homepage, we can also have um, a search function where you can search, like a simple search, just like the one in the toolbar, um, very similar to the one um, above. And we also have a list of books which are recommended or like which are just, you know, might be of your interest on our homepage. So now I'll take you through the registration step. As you can see, we have a simple um, page with different kinds of fields. So obviously you have to enter your username, you have to enter your password, your first name, your last name, your nickname, your email, your address, and credit card and year of birth. Once you've filled in these fields, it will ask you to register and then it'll check, ask you to check your email so you can activate your account. Um, and it'll send you a nice activation link which will then redirect you back to our website and notify you that your account has now been activated. So we're now going to show you what um, an existing user can do with this website. Uh, we're going to log in using the toolbar. And we get a nice display message saying, welcome back, Donald Duck. That's who we are. Um, as you can see, there's a little section where you can also add your books, add your publications if you want to, to sell them, um, just like any other book, site, uh, book website. And this is what the page looks like. Let's, make, let's sell a book called Computing and Algorithms.
So we added an additional feature to our database and it's that you can actually add a display picture to your book that you've made. Once you've added this book, you can now see that it's listed under the featured items and your personal account as well. Um, it's got all its details, it's written by Mr. Gary, um, it's got the price and the book, and now you can add this to your wish list, um, which is just a list of the books that you um, are planning to buy. Here's a demonstration of the simple search as well. Um, as you can see, we typed in Chinese, and um, Chinese 101 came up. And now we've had the option to add this to our shopping cart. Um, let's, let's try to see if our wishlist still exists. And there we go. So the wishlist and the shopping cart are stored in our database for each individual user. So say I want to learn about poker and I have a quick search for that. And um, now I can go into this book and I can add this to our cart. And you'll see that the previous books are also in our cart along with this one. Um, we can delete books off this card if you don't like them. So um, I don't feel like playing poker anymore or I don't feel like learning Chinese anymore. And I can just delete them. And as you can see, there's also a checkout option in our shopping cart if um, you want to choose that, that is. So yeah, it'll send you an email and you'll receive an email confirming that you've bought this book. And just like any other website, you can also log out. And when you log out, you've lost your individual users um, book history and your wish list in the shopping cart. It'll remain um, linked to your account though. So how does our project do all of this? Now the browser requests for some information from our web server which contains a GSP page and the Java Bean. Now these, these contain some servlets and services that communicate with the JDBC which is your da Java database connection uh, mechanism which in turn talk to the data, talks to the database gets a result and then returns it to our browser um, in a dynamically generated HTML page. So GSP is in service, our web server. Um, essentially, this is Java code that runs on the web server. It reads users' actions and requests. Um, so for example, if the user requests to add a book to a shopping cart, um, it's the GSP and the server that will perform this action. Um, it'll perform this task and then it will return a dynamically generated HTML page back to the browser to display to the user. So I'm going to quickly run through a simple JSP project um, just to give you a feel of how we did this. Now obviously a lot of the things we did in our project are super complicated but I'm just going to give you a simple example of a simple JSP project that you could make at home right now. So for this you'd require Java Eclipse and you'd, you're required to um, link your t Apache Tomcat um, with your Java Eclipse. The way you should do this is you should um, find your Apache Tomcat, find your installation directory um, in which you've stored, if, in which you've um, downloaded your Apache and then link it to your Java um, EE. So once we've done that, let's name our project. Um, let's just call it JSP because we're making a simple JSP. So JSPs are basically Java server pages and there are a bunch of HTML pages with Java code in them. So we will make our JSP in our web content folder. Um, we're going to name it JSP.JSP and we're going to put in some HTML code with some Java and then run it to see what it looks like. So the code we're adding is simple HTML. Um, in our headed three, we've got hello world of Java. We've got um, a few Java functions in here as well. So as you can see, java util.date, that'll give the current time. And we've also got a JavaScript script. So it's gonna print out, I love comp 9321, 
five times. Let's see if this works. We're gonna run it on our Apache Tomcat server, um, as usual, and there we go. So we've got the um, headed three, Hello World of Java, and we've also got I Love Comp 9221 five times. So, what is a Java bean? The Java bean is just a name for a simple object that contains state and no behavior, like a struct in some of the languages. Um, the best thing about a Java bean is that the settings can be saved to a persistent storage and restored. This is especially useful in our project where we constantly use um, beans such as the user bean or the wishlist bean to keep track of what each individual session um, is doing. This is an example of our user bean. It's got um, a bunch of private strings, um, some int, some booleans, and it's got a lot of getter setter functions. So we can set um, the first name, we can get the last name, um, stuff like that. So obviously when a user uses a website, we have to deal with requests. How do we do this? Um, basically the servlet, we've created a servlet that handles all the commands. Now the commands use service class methods and these called data access objects, which then use JDBC to access the database. Um, I'll show you an example where we choose the cart add command um, to run a particular process. So say the user wants to add a book to his shopping cart. Um, as you can see, we've chosen to highlight the cart add command, which is basically in our servlet file. Let's see what this cart add command does. So in our cart service implementation, as we can see in lines 36 and 37, um, we basically detect a user using the user bean, um, and we use the cart service to add the book to the cart. Now it takes in the user ID and the book ID. That's what the cart add command does. It just implements the cart service. Now the cart service has a list of functions um, which then have to access the database, right? Because the shopping cart is in the database. So um, as you can see, it's got um, a bunch of functions that use the data access objects, the cart DAO. So the biggest use for JDBC is to allow Java applications to connect to a relational database. Um, it follows four steps in this process. It connects to a database, it creates a statement object for the database, it then executes that SQL query, and then it processes that result and sends it back through um, to the servlet, to the command. So here's our implementation of our add to cart function. We take in the account ID and the publication ID from our service, and in line 50, we establish a connection with our database. In line 52, we prepare our statement, and then from line 53 to line 55, we actually execute um, our SQL queries. Here's a visual representation of our database. As you can see, it's got multiple tables, like accounts, cart, people, publications, um, published by, etc. Here's the account table um, with the first name, last name, nickname, etc. So how did we build our DB? Um, we used simple SQL queries to create and instantiate tables. Um, we also used insert to manually set up some dummy values into our DB, like some users, some books, etc. When a user uses our website, they're added to the DB when they register. Here's how we've created our accounts table. Here's the SQL for how we insert it into our accounts, um, into our tables. So a small note about our shopping cart and wish list. Um, our DB has tables for each of these, and the way they keep in, they keep track of who's which users have wish listed which items is that they have a foreign key for the publications and for the users. That way, they can link the accounts with the publications that they have wish listed. So I hope um, this project helped you understand a little bit about our project and how we implemented some basics. All the best for your project. And please like, subscribe, peace.